Good afternoon. Hi. Thanks for having me again. And we are going live. Right now. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much to be with us here. And uh, today is actually the um, 5th of November 2021. And we are right here at 4 uh, 40 p.m. in Singapore, one degree uh, north the latitude um, of the world. Um, uh, you know, I have someone very special with me, and that's Richard Lowe of One Global, the director of One Global Property Services in Singapore that has offices uh, in many, many parts of the world. I'm so delighted that we had done two episodes of Wealth Management with Richard. And Richard, I am going to share you to the metaverse of the Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, we are already live on YouTube and now we are live Hi, in Thank the you metaverse. So um, you know, how powerful this uh, technology is and that I'm so connected with you and also with the community, my community and the community of podcast world in Singapore and the rest of the world, particularly in Indo pacific And now, um, you know, Richard, you have been a great co-host um, and a great trainer for wealth management, talking about uh, investments in Kent, Ashford, and even you talked about uh, Birmingham in the first episode. And you talked about yourself uh, in the first episode, you know, you being a, a, a UK resident in Singapore for the last 20 years and you've backpacked around the world. And I'm so excited to welcome you in this part of the world, especially in Singapore. And, you know, as the world goes nationalistic, um, Richard, Singapore, I think, has a role to play even much more. So tell the world that we can co-live together um, harmoniously, regardless of color, language, wherever you are. Uh, and regardless of which uh, income group you are, Richard, uh, I'm so glad that we are doing this live to tell the world, uh, Richard, that, you know, we've got one Vicky here from Singapore, born and bred here, and I've lived in China, communist China. I've lived in France, traveled to over 25 countries in the world. And also, Richard, yourself backpacked around the world and living in Singapore and your children are third uh, culture children in Singapore. I'm so excited that we are broadcasting um, this to uh, Singapore, into Pacific and to the rest of, of the world. Richard, would you like to say hi, Richard? Hi, yeah, well, uh, again, thanks. Uh, my name is Richard Lowe, and uh, I've even got the, the Chinese surname to uh, blend in into Singapore as well. But yeah, I've been living here for 26 years, thoroughly enjoyed living in a multicultural society, which, you know, I believe uh, makes life a lot more interesting, a uh, lot more interesting conversation. And, uh, you know, it's been a great place to, to raise a young family. Um, you know, Richard, uh, you know, whatever you do right now, you must be so passionate uh, in your career. You must have got some love in it because you believe in it. You believe in the business and you also believe in the goodness it makes to, it gives to people, right? Wealth management. Um, and uh, we spoke about wealth management and the ROIs a little bit and the numbers a little bit earlier uh, in episode one and episode two, I'm so excited that, you know, um, we are opening opportunities and opening the eyes of, to a lot of people, myself particularly, you know, I never knew that uh, there is a service, uh, One Global in Singapore, and also you do have a whole suite of services providing uh, on a one-stop hub in Singapore for people like myself as a professional um, and also young families, uh, and also, you know, people just have a very global outlook uh, in life. Uh, the services that you provide, I'm really excited that it intrigued me and I was discussing this with my husband. Oh my goodness, is that how, uh, why haven't we found uh, Wine Global, right? Because you do have your brokers and you're going to have an event um, uh, this weekend uh, and you will be talking a little bit about your event and is giving us a sneak peek. But even before we dive into... Um, uh, our content proper. Um, Richard, I'm so glad uh, to welcome you to this podcast universe, the metaverse uh, of Facebook and the metaverse that we'll be going 
uh, into the world. And very soon we're going to have holograms. Like I'm going to talk to um, Richard here. <laughs> and we're going to have this uh, podcast about wealth management. Uh, Richard, how has your business changed you? Talk about that. Uh, well, I think uh, you know, real estate is a, a, an asset class that uh, has helped to make people very wealthy over the years. Um, during my time working in finance and real estate, it's been an education for myself as well uh, to learn wow. how to uh, grow your wealth, use real estate as part of an overall uh, balanced investment portfolio. Yep. Uh, but it's always been something I've loved to do, um, even from a, a young age, going out looking for properties, whether that be for something when I'm going to rent somewhere. When I originally arrived here in Singapore, to actually buying a property that I'm going to be living in and the excitement that that uh, creates, as well as um, hunting for great deals and uh, investment property, uh, in whether it be in Singapore or in other countries overseas. It's something that uh, excites me and uh, you know helps to motivate me to, to, to get out of bed and live life yeah, to the full. Sure, and, and, and you, know, um, you know, we've talked about that um, uh, briefly in our second episode about this value of uh, wealth uh, preservation. Uh, the value of growing your wealth um, and in French it's called the patrimoine. Um, wealth uh, in, in Asia, right? I mean, it's, it's such a, a very conservative, preserved, hand down value that you need to hand down something for your children and grandchildren. Right and and nothing beats a house, nothing beats property. Um, in the eyes of uh, an Asian investor, um, and and you remember those? I'm not sure about you, but you know me, um, being a, a, a you know a Chinese, um, uh, you know I remember those times or those stories that you watch, those classical black and white stories. Like you always have this grandmother, right, putting their dollar, their coins below the pillow and then saving it up in a piggy bank and hopefully that that money can grow for their families. And we're talking about a value that is really time tested, history tested. And, we're, and in Asia particularly, the first thing you need to do um, as a young couple is investment in a house, a real estate. Uh, I mean, of course, in Singapore, we've got, we're seeing 90% home, home ownership. It's no brainer. The first thing um, when a man proposes to a girl, they will say, okay, let's buy a house together. That means that you're going to invest in your first property. And you, and of course, with investment in the first property, you're talking about capital gains. And then if you invest in a second property, you're talking about capital gain on two properties plus rental income. And that's how that multiplier effect grows, uh, Richard, am I right? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, here in Singapore, uh, HDB effectively provides uh, newly married uh, couples an opportunity to, to buy into a property at a subsidized um, amount. After five years of what we call minimum occupation period, uh, you can sell it and almost certainly you make a, a handsome profit because of the price point subsidy that you bought in at the beginning. And if you're in a position to upgrade, whether that's to a larger HDB, uh, that's the public housing for those people who are not familiar with uh, the Singapore yeah. property market, yeah. or upgrade to uh, a private condominium. And, yeah. you know, real estate over the medium to long term has invariably uh, increased in price. It's yeah. a tangible uh, Asset and something that people understand. It's yeah. not overly complicated. Yes, you can borrow from the bank, so you know this helps to leverage your investment and magnify yeah. your returns. Exactly. So I think this is why you know most investors, you know, will have a set fairly significant um, part of their investment portfolio in real estate. Yeah, and now we're talking about uh, Wine Global Property Services providing um, services. Uh, to people like myself um, and also um, a certain segment of demographics and psychographics of people. And you're going to have this event to tell us about uh, what uh, you are offering uh, in your two-day seminar or workshop 
over the weekend. Uh, Richard, would you like to tell us that? So the yeah, floor sure. is yours. Yep. Yeah, thanks. Well, uh, again, just to summarize uh, One Global's value proposition before uh, sharing a little bit more about the event this weekend, what we aspire to do is, is help uh, busy working professionals add international real estate to their investment portfolio and just make that journey as smooth and as hassle-free as possible yeah. by providing this one-stop shop service. Yeah. So starting from sourcing good investment property to yeah. helping through the acquisition with introduction to lawyers, mortgage brokers for finance, um, and when it comes to renting the property out, introducing to our property management companies that will do everything from finding the tenant, managing the property, collecting the rent, and even helping to, to resell it. So really guiding you through the whole process to make that journey as smooth and as easy as possible. Now, at One Global, uh, we have clients from all over the world. We have our corporate um, global office here in Singapore, and we do lots of events um, as an opportunity to engage with clients. And this weekend is actually the first live event that we're going to be doing for probably about 20 months due to yeah, the, the, yeah. the COVID issues yeah. uh, at the Four Seasons Hotel, right in the center of Singapore, a lovely hotel. Um, we're going to be effectively doing a, a, an event that covers the London, what we call a London property workshop. Mm. So what we mean by a London property workshop is it's going to uh, include multiple guest speakers. I'm going to be speaking mm -hmm. at two of the sessions, but we've got seven speakers in total who are going to be discussing not only about what has happened in uh, recent times and what is projected to happen in the London property market over the next few years, but also learning about the rental market there, uh, the tax situation in the UK, um, whether to buy in your person name or through a company name, uh, comparing actually, wow. if you're looking at an investment property, where would be more prudent to put your hard-earned dollars, an investment property in Singapore or an investment property in the UK? And what I mean by an investment property is not a place necessarily where you're living in, but a property that you've invested in to rent out um, where you're not intending to live in um, in the future, but it's purely there to maximize uh, your growth and the, the growth of your wealth. Yeah. And, and Richard, um, you know, uh, it's, it's really um, such an opportunity um, for Singaporeans, uh, I would say, you know, number one, you know, you know that the prices in Singapore um, is increasing fast, especially so in, a, in the pandemic, which is surprising. Um, but it has really, really gone up, uh, you know, in different, in different kind, with different kinds of uh, properties. And also with the fact that, you know, this is a small island. Land and supply is very limited. Um, prices only go up uh, because of the limited supply of land. But not only that, um, Richard, it is also due to the um, cost of production, cost of putting up uh, the construction, right? Manpower, labor cost, material cost, cost of cement that you're importing from Cambodia, Malaysia, Indonesia, you know, the logistical cost involved. It is always increasing um, and also plus inflation, right? So sure. with all these factors, right, it seems that uh, Singapore... Um, there, I would say that the returns on investment in Singapore, um, it's getting less attractive um, if you were to forecast it uh, in, into the uh, future. Um, so therefore, it does make a comparison logical if you put the same money, uh, you know, about half a million Singapore dollars, 200,000 Singapore dollars, um, if you have that ready in cash to, um, you know, uh, to invest in another uh, 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 platform, UK, now we're talking about UK here, um, to have a higher level of return. Uh, am I right, uh, Richard? Well, generally so, when we're talking about residential property, uh, there are a variety of different factors, but when we look at an entry-level property in yep. Singapore, and let's yep. just take uh, about a million Singapore dollars, uh, believe it or not, that's an entry-level for yep. this part of the world. If you're looking at an investment property, so not your primary residence, that let's yeah. say is a second property, the things like the uh, stamp duty tax that you will need to pay is close to 15% on a million yeah. dollars. So that's 150,000 <laughs> in taxes straight away. 
Yeah. The other thing is that um, <laughs> the loan to value that you're allowed to uh, take from banks here in Singapore yeah. is only 45%, which means yeah. you're putting down a 55% deposit. So that's another $550,000 mm. wow. on top of your tax uh, is 700,000 Singapore dollars on a million dollar property. Well, for the same amount of money, you could actually buy six or seven entry level condos in the UK, uh, potentially with much higher uh, rental yields of five, six, seven percent, yes. compared with here in Singapore, a residential yeah. property may be getting you one or two. Wow. So, um, yeah, at the end of the day, Watch this space because one of the sessions I'll be doing uh, yeah. this Sunday at two o'clock at the Four yeah. Seasons Hotel will be making this uh, comparison and contrasting. And what I've often found is that certain people say, well, look, I only really want to invest in where I know. And I understand from human nature that gives us comfort that, well, I know Singapore, I can go down the road, I can have a look, I understand Singapore, this is where I live. But my challenge is that just because you know Singapore, does that make it the best place to put your hardened mm. you know, dollar? Or if you were familiar um, with other opportunities so that you can make a well-informed decision of whether yeah. should I put it into Singapore or are there some opportunities that could actually give me uh, much better returns? Yeah, and you're talking about uh, that intangible element called trust. Because when you are talking about, okay, the property in Singapore, you can go and visit, you know the road, you know the street. As opposed to if you, if you, if you were to put the same amount of money uh, into another property, but you do not know that property, the way to circumvent that trust and that level of certainty and familiarity is an intermediary that you can trust, right? Absolutely. Uh, and that's why you say that the, your value of One Global is very important. The personality uh, and the person of One Global is very important. The person that we interact with is you, uh, Richard, and then your other uh, speakers. That would give the assurance um, to whomever watching. And definitely, I'm not, I'm not here because you are not, I'm not sponsoring your event, nor am I sponsored by you or is this an advertisement. But this is what I'm, I'm saying. We need to have an element of trust when we interact with a company um, because this trust is almost like a bank, right? Because you're talking about, okay, BNP, Citibank, um, Standard Chartered, that brand, is the level of uh, uh, non-verbal, unconscious or sub-level conscious trust that you have, which is you are, you are trying to um, now uh, educate and tell the people um, at large, your clients at large, like, okay, one global is the trustworthy uh, intermediary because it has all these characteristics and because it has all these professional people who are going to look after your money and your investment. Am I right, Richard? I couldn't agree more. Uh, trust is obviously fundamental to any relationship. And when it comes to investing your hard-earned cash, building that trust with both an individual and a company promise is, is absolutely key to that. And so this is why we do lots of educational events. We're happy that we're going to be doing our first live event because, as that saying goes, you can't fax a handshake. And yeah. uh, by being able to meet up with people live, uh, we can look each other in the eye and, and get a sense oh, of, yes. you know, do I feel sure, comfortable definitely, definitely. You know, putting my hard-earned cash and yeah. uh, believing in yourself and your company's ability to help me grow my wealth so that I can mm. sleep at night and know that I've got an investment that over you know, the medium to long term is, is going to grow in value. So you know, building um, trust through meeting people, through educational events, building credibility, and of course, you know, a track record uh, helps uh, provide that additional confidence as well. Yeah, and you talked about uh, track record, uh, Richard. Um, that is something that uh, intrigues me. Tell us some of your past successful projects that uh, you've launched at One Global. Well, we've, we've launched uh, many, many projects. Uh, historically, we started in uh, London and mm. uh, we have 
connections with you know top tier developers um, across uh, London. As we've grown as a company, we've divested also into other cities like Birmingham, Manchester, commuter belt towns like Ashford. Mm. And you know we've uh, really helped to, to build client growth through uh, well-researched uh, investment opportunities. You know, this year alone, we've seen an incredible uh, growth in the UK property mm. market. It's, it's estimated that on average, property has grown by 13.2%. Now, just prior to the pandemic breaking out or during the uh, breakout, Analysts were initially thinking that the real estate market was going to actually decline by five to seven percent, but we've yes. seen some of the best growth in over twenty years. So it's been absolutely a phenomenal time, and certainly the fundamentals of the UK property market are very sound. And even the the next five year uh, predictions is that there's going to be an average growth of approximately twenty one point five percent across the mm. UK. Wow. In some regions up in the northwest such as the Manchester Liverpool area up as high as 28.5% capital growth so um you know it's a good steady market good rule of law uh, with very strong fundamentals in terms of lack of supply good population growth uh good rule of law and so you know we've seen just a uh, very steady good quality mm. growth and that looks like it's going to continue for many years to come yeah, and uh, I think a very, very important question, Richard, how is the probability of me running into one of the football players if I go to Leeds, if I go to <laughs> Liverpool or Manchester, or should I get, can I run into Ronaldo? I think he's with uh, Manchester, You probably right? could, actually, you know, Vicky. Uh, we have a project which uh, is a beautiful project, and it's actually called Number One Old Trafford. Wow. And it literally is about 600 metres from the Manchester United football ground. So on one side, it overlooks the uh, the football ground. On the other side, it overlooks Salford Keys and the walkaways in Manchester. Yeah. It's literally just... That's a bonus, through. right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, for any football fanatics, it's amazing. You know, you could literally have your bedroom overlooking uh, the Manchester United yeah. Stadium. And who sure. knows, if it's, if sure. it's a high enough that's, floor, that's you might even get a free view. Point, right? <laughs> isn't that isn't that your unique selling point? <laughs> well, it certainly is for any Manchester United fan. I'm not sure if you're a Liverpool fan, you might want to buy there. But uh... yeah, but they will be buying the Liverpool property that you have, you know. And yes. also, I'm very excited, you know, that you know, you you mentioned something that really blew my mind. Like you know, you you said that you know, with a million Singapore dollars, we can only buy an entry level private uh, condo in Singapore, but you can buy up to like seven different uh, apartments uh, in the UK, which, which kind of even blows my mind because when you have seven different properties spread across different places, in fact, you're not putting all eggs in a basket, Richard. I mean, that's a huge a drawing point, uh, Richard. Well, the reason being is that the, the loan to value uh, here yeah. in Singapore, your second property is a loan to value at 45%. Yeah. Um, your third one is at 35%. So... Yeah. You know, your leverage is even less. But in the UK, there's no restriction like this. So, mm. you know, it's normal that you could get a 60 to 70 percent loan to value and a yeah. push. You might even get up to 75 percent loan to value. So the amount of cash you're putting down as a deposit is yeah. much smaller um, as a percentage of the purchase yeah. price. Yeah. Plus the entry level, um, if I convert to Sing dollars, is about... An entry-level condo uh, apartment in the UK outside of London, yeah. in places like Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham, yeah. uh, Ashford, yeah. uh, could be in Sing dollars, two hundred seventy thousand Singapore dollars. Yeah. So when you can get, let's say, a seventy percent loan to value, and you're putting yeah. a thirty percent deposit down, this is yeah. why for the same amount wow. of money, you could actually buy six or seven properties, yielding five, six, seven percent. And because we can get uh, interest-only mortgages, yeah. Yeah. it means that we're servicing less each month on wow. that mortgage, which means our I see. positive cash flow is significantly higher. So every okay. month we're producing positive cash flow yeah. um, and over the medium to long term uh, experiencing great capital growth. And, and because you say that the amount of money um, equivalent, I can actually like, 
you know, uh, purchase up to an X number uh, of uh, property across in some of these places that you say, it means that I can eventually stay in one of them, right? And then the rest of them, I, you know, I can, I can, I can, I can let you manage, right, Richard? Yeah, I think it's a retirement <laughs> plan right there. Yes, um, I'm, I, the thing is that, that that has to be my plan. I mean, I need to discuss with my husband right away after this podcast. I'm going to tell him, hey, let's buy up five different properties. I, and I'll, t- I'll tell him, hey, um, you know, isn't, isn't uh, one of your, um, you know, one of your favorite uh, football groups is in where and where and where we will have put a tick and tick and tick. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so, yeah. But what you said before as well about um, not having all your eggs in one basket, you know, a a basic part of reducing risk in real estate is diversification. And by having properties in six or seven different locations, even if there was a void period in one of the properties, that's not going to break the bank, so to speak. But if you had all of your eggs in one single property here in Singapore and the economy isn't so strong, yeah. uh, expats leaving maybe, and you've got uh, an apartment that's sitting empty for three or four months. That yeah. could be a significant amount of sure. uh, money that you're having to service every single month because you're servicing both the, the interest and the, the principal. Okay, now that as we are speaking, uh, Richard, you've got some fans coming in. I think his name is Adrian. Adrian, Adrian Lim Chi Wei. Hi, yes. Adrian. Yeah, he's one of my, my colleagues. Hi, Adrian. Um, yeah, I see his picture there. Adrian, thanks for coming in. And you're right, Adrian. Um, diversification of risk. Uh, he's actually echoing what I just said. Um, you know, that's the power of uh, the community, Adrian. Thanks, Adrian, for sticking with us. Um, you, you know, um, uh, Richard, uh, we also talked about uh, the personality of One Global. Tell us about who are the founders or who are the owners right now for One Global. Well, James Puddle uh, is both the founder and the CEO. Uh, He's originally from the UK. Uh, He founded the company about four and a half, five years ago now. Wow. Um, He was coming over uh, because he worked with uh, uh, developers in the UK and was flying on a regular basis over to Asia to bring these developments to the Mm. Asian market. Wow. Built up up relationships in this part Mm. of the world. He's married to um, a a lady that is, I believe, half Singaporean as well. Mm. So, you know, there's some strong connections here. I just Mm. felt that through his uh, connections with Mm. top developers in the UK, Mm. by setting up his own investment and real estate agency in this part of the world, uh, had a competitive edge by bringing, you know, the very best developments Mm. to Asian investors. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Richard, um, we do, uh, and to let the international audience know, and please, uh, this is in Singapore, right? Uh, and we are, in the inter- uh, we are in the internet world that is being broadcasted and pushed firstly to Singapore. However, this show right now live is international wherever you are. If you are coming in from Europe, coming in from Australia, the US, Indonesia, Malaysia, India, uh, you know, we'd like to say hi to you um, from myself and Richard. Um, Richard, um, it, it's very exciting for us as we are trying to, uh, we are straining our necks um, to come to the end of the pandemic. Um, you know, we're really looking forward to um, having such a new life again, to redesign your life, to relook at some of your life's priorities. I, I would think that people are, um, you know, people are grateful Uh, I mean, myself, firstly, I am grateful that we have lived through one of the most tremendous times in humankind. I was talking to my dear friend, um, uh, Edward. Um, Edward's a dear friend of mine in Bordeaux because he was trying to help me build my business in Bordeaux. You know, it it was so hard for many, many people. But if this pandemic goes away, which is now in Europe, you're seeing the numbers going down, the rates are going down, people are living like normal already. Um, It will come. Um, Richard, um, it will come. I, I hope that 2022 really heralds a new uh, uh, a life for us, a kind of new reflection uh, at, that we evaluate our lives and our priorities. And definitely um, wealth management is something that we have to really look into because it really talks about 
taking, it's almost like buying insurance, right? You're taking care of your money. Uh, you're taking out care about building your wealth for your family, Richard, um, investing in properties, in real estate. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, uh, as you say, our generation, it's the first time we've really gone through some major challenges yeah. uh, through this uh, COVID pandemic. But yeah. as, as I think I mentioned in our first uh, yeah. episode, yeah. when there's adversity, yeah. Um, when there is change, there is also opportunity. Yeah. And I think if we, you know, look and learn from our experiences, the, the world has changed forever yes. through this pandemic and the way that we live and the way that we do business. Uh, when we look at real estate, uh, people have completely reconsidered what yeah. do they need from a home? Because it yeah. may be that they're going to be working full time or at least a significant amount of time from their home, which yeah. means they may need an extra room for a home office. Yeah. They may yeah. need extra oh, space, whether it be space. a balcony, space. Uh, so they've got some fresh air and feel yeah. like they're not cooped up in a, yeah. in a prison cell yeah. or access to public parkland. We've seen that there's been a major shift yeah. in how people Priorities. Uh, want to live. Quality of life. People are really looking into the quality of life. They're reprioritizing about you know where they're putting their money um, and also where they live. Uh, I think this is such a time, uh, Richard, that you are coming um, to us and your event on uh, uh, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, right? At, at this the, Saturday, this Sunday on November the 6th and 7th, so yeah, just tomorrow at, and Sunday. Which is um, at the Four Seasons Hotel, one of the top uh, hotel, uh, five-star hotel in Singapore. It's going to be free, right? Richard? Yes, yeah, but you do need to register in advance um, so we can comply with uh, COVID restrictions. So, mm. you know, please don't hesitate to, to email me. Um, my email address is Richard Lowe, Lowe is spelled L O W E, um, as in the Western way, uh, yeah. at ogpsglobal.com. So that's Richard Lowe at ogpsglobal.com. Uh, global.com yep. do yep. email me uh, seats are limited because of covid restrictions but we'd yep. be delighted to see you we've got a packed program uh, of seven different speakers covering multiple topics on the london and uk property do you, do you want to mention some of these names the outstanding names uh, that you're inviting to be your speaker yes so uh, we've got chris frame from get ground uh, he's going to be speaking about a, a revolutionary company that mm. is a digital platform that is allowing people to uh, invest via a company structure. And there are a variety oh, of yes. many, many benefits yes. of investing via a company structure yes. as opposed to your personal name. And they, they can do this wow. uh, at one tenth of the cost. They can yes. set up the company uh, within literally uh, less than a day. They help set wow. up a bank account, do all your uh, tax returns, it's, it's all platform digitally based. So mm. that he's one of the, uh, the speakers that's um, yes. going to be speaking. We've got uh, Colin Walpole from Life Residential. He's based here in Singapore. Um, he's going to be speaking about the update of the rental market in mm. London. Mm. I'm going to be doing two, se two sessions myself. Uh, yeah. What is giving an overview to the London uh, property market. Mm. I've been given some context of what's happened in the past, where we are now, and yeah. what we uh, predict as the London market moving forwards. And I'm going to be doing one on Sunday, as I mentioned, at 2 p.m., yeah. which is going to be comparing investing yeah. in a Singapore property yeah. compared with a UK property. And it might be yeah. a little bit of a shake-up for some, but yeah. uh, again, uh, come along. Uh, you'll find out uh, a great deal. And learn from a lot of other speakers as well. We've sure. got, we've got sure. uh, Sam Lee from Capricorn Finance. Wow. He's going to be going through uh, the different sort of mortgage options. As mm. I mentioned, interest-only mortgage yeah. is something that is available in the UK, which is not available mm. here in Singapore. And most investors, if they have the option of an interest-only mortgage, will take it because mm. they're servicing a smaller amount each month. And ultimately, they're not looking to live in that property, so they don't feel the need to pay down the mortgage over time because at some mm. stage in the future, they're going to sell it, take the capital uplift, and you know maybe redeploy their capital into another investment. 
Yeah, and, and that's uh, Richard Lowe. And uh, the email is Richard, R-I-C-H-A-R-D-L-O-W-E at O-G-P-S dot com. Uh, O-G-P-S global. Global. Dot com. Okay, O-G-P-S, which stands for O One Global Property Services, O-G-P-S global dot com. I mean, it's quite easy, right? Yeah. So, um. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, Richard Lowe for you. And what a wonderful time that we're able to connect. And it gives me such an exhilaration to be able to like pin our hopes on the future once again. Um, you know, always looking forward. I mean, we need to move forward, Richard. Um, in the last 22 months, we're stuck in time. We're, we are stuck in space <laughs> in our home. Sure. To start in time and start in space and when the world has stopped on its axis we are moving forward again i'm so glad to have you uh, richard um is there anything you would like to wrap up with for the next uh, 15 seconds before we say goodbye well again thanks for having me on the show vicky um i think that there is now light at the end of the tunnel here in singapore uh, we are starting to have the opportunity to to travel and I see that yeah. as time goes by, there'll be more and more countries that we can uh, travel to. Um, it's, it's been a challenging time, but uh, as we say, there's, uh, there's light there and we're yeah. all looking forward to you know, being able to uh, go see our family and friends in other parts of the world. And who knows, from a real estate point of view, maybe go visit uh, some properties you've already invested in or maybe look at some new properties as well. But, yeah. you know, um, you know, I want to yeah, visit Richard. <laughs> visit Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, they can. The thing is that you know, because Richard, um, you are not only opening your services to Singaporeans, definitely, because you know we are now in a borderless virtual metaverse world right now. Uh, anybody who would like to reach out to you um, beyond the shores of Singapore, they can really just come and write to you, right? Um, they could be from Malaysia, from Indonesia, from Hong Kong. Uh, I mean, any part of the world. If, if they take a liking to your past two episodes, ladies, please visit the past two episodes by Richard. And we are bringing to you uh, from uh, GDM Productions, myself, Vicky Esther, and also Richard. You know, it's been such a wonderful time, the three episodes we, we've got, uh, Richard. Great. Well, it's been a real pleasure. And uh, I hope uh, we can continue to do more. And at the same time, build relations with the viewers. And I hope that uh, yeah. I can see and meet, whether that's physically or through uh, virtual calls. You know, we're not limited by boundaries. Yeah. And I think yeah. one of the things that the pandemic has brought to us, the fact that we've broken down certain boundaries yeah. and there are no longer physical boundaries. We can, yeah. we can meet each other and build a relationship, whether it's face-to-face yeah. -face or through virtual experience. Yeah, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, when you buy a property there in, in London, you're investing, definitely there'll be uh, different ways that um, Richard will be talking at, in the seminar, in the workshop, um, how you do not have to fly there to sign the papers, am I right? Everything can be done remotely these days, uh, that's yeah. including uh, investing in a property as well. So if you, if you wish to go there, that's absolutely fine, but uh, it's certainly not a necessity. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to having our next uh, season with you, Richard. I will be on my live radio and my podcast audio. Um, probably I will invite you uh, to my audio podcast and my live radio that is also um, streaming live to the rest of the world. So ladies and gentlemen, and that's Richard Lowe. Richard Christopher Lowe, um, formerly from Oxford, UK, which I'm so, um, how should I say, I'm, I'm so, I have such a connection with UK, even though, you know, I'm just a tourist, but you know, my Cambridge exams from <laughs> UK, right? You know, and my Shakespeare uh, papers from Stratford, um, uh, and also, um, you know, my, my, my niece herself, She's won the um, URA um, scholarship to study in uh, UK uh, University of London wow. on urbanization. Great. And yeah, for three years, and then she was seconded to study at Yale University for a master's course 
um, and she's now working um, with the Singapore government. You know, we have Singapore. I mean, Singaporeans are all over the world. Um, people do invest overseas. It's just that I think um, there isn't enough of awareness uh, for the people. I think uh, for someone like uh, One Global, definitely, um, I see yourself being very well versed um, in all the um, various aspects that we've discussed about in our three episodes. Um, that's from me uh, to the to the rest of the viewers and the listeners. You know, Richard has been very very professional, and every question he's answered professionally. Um, in every in every way, um, he has passed the litmus test. Let's give Richard <laughs> a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you once again, Vicky. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. So I'll talk to you, Richard, ladies and gentlemen, and that's uh, Wine Global in um, uh, uh, the Hotel uh, Four Seasons this weekend, and you can write to him to register uh, the entrance. Right. Bye, Richard. I'll talk to you again. Thank you. All the